Sometimes you might have a group of predefined options, but you want the user to be able to select multiple options and not just one of them. That's where checkboxes are useful. Let's say that we wanted the user to be able to tell us which major topic areas are interesting to them. They might be interested in more than one topic, so checkboxes are perfect for this. I'm going to type out some checkboxes and then explain them. So if we jump into our workspace here, and I scroll down past the select element we created earlier. We'll type out a label, once again without the for attribute because we're not actually labeling any specific control here, just a group of controls. We'll say interests, and then we'll use the input element, and for the type attribute, we'll say checkbox. We'll give this one the ID of development and the value of interest underscore development. We'll give it a name of user underscore interest. And then we can close that input element. Right after it, we want to add a label. And once again, we'll give it the class light. And we'll add a for attribute of development because that matches the ID attribute that we just created. And then we'll give it a label of development. And right after, we'll put a BR element to break down to the next line because just like our radio buttons, we're going to list these out vertically. So let's copy that because the code we're going to write will be very similar for each one of these. For the next one, instead of development, I'll say design. So I'll just keep the word design in my clipboard. And we'll change the value from interest development to interest design. We'll change the for attribute in the label to match the ID. So that will be design as well. And then we'll change the content of the label element to design. Finally, for the last input, we'll change the ID to business. I'll keep the word business in my clipboard, so I've just copied that. I'll paste it to the value, so now it says interest business. And then we'll change the for attribute to business so it matches the ID. And then finally, we'll change the content to business. And for this last one, we don't need another line break, so we'll remove that. And if we save that out, switch over to our preview, and refresh the page, you can see that we now have these checkboxes down at the bottom. And I can click on the labels or the actual checkboxes to check each one of them. And unlike radio buttons, where I can only select one at a time, I can select multiple checkboxes. So let's jump back to the code and take a closer look at this. Very similar to radio buttons, I've used a label for the group and a label for each individual option. The syntax is almost identical because most of the same rules apply. The only real difference here is the type attribute, and it's set to checkbox instead of radio. This will tell the browser to render checkboxes, and the user can select multiple checkboxes instead of just one of them, like with radio buttons. That about covers the basics of form elements. Next up, we'll learn how to take your knowledge a little bit further.